Hello guys and welcome to episode of 11 with uh, Coventry City and the Operation Premiership Series. Um, as you can see we're now at the start of December so I've got November's to November's fixtures to catch up on. Uh, quickly I will just show you that I let one of my players leave on loan. Um, Cyrus Christie has gone on loan to Portsmouth until January uh, just for a couple of months with a recall option. Um, as he is my backup right back but with him being very young and having high potential I do want to get him some first team football and he has actually done alright so far for Portsmouth so um, he's gone out on loan um, obviously I may look to bring him back and use him for the second half of the season but he hasn't been getting much for looking with Jordan Clark at right back so far so we'll jump onto the uh, fixtures and it hasn't improved great a great amount since you last saw us which was the Burnley game 2-2 draw we've now not won since we got beaten by Tottenham in the Capital One Cup we failed to win any of the games since uh, we followed up that 2-2 draw with a game at home to Millwall and we were absolutely battered 3-0 I was so disappointed with this um, Francis Lewis guy after 28 minutes put, them, uh, put Millwall in front Andy Keogh made it two to six minutes before half time and he stayed that way for most of the second half and then Franco Scalata put through his own net just after Shane Lowry had been sent off for Millwall and two minutes after that he had a chance to at least make up a little bit and get us on the score sheet and he missed his second penalty in recent games um, I've since taken him off the penalty taking list because with me if you miss one I'll let you off if you miss two you're gone um, I can't afford penalty misses uh, especially being in a relegation battle which is what we're in uh, we got absolutely play off the park Millwall had plenty more chances than ourselves uh, more possession away from home really disappointing performance by the team and uh, I wasn't happy at all uh, we then played Colchester away I wanted three points from this Colchester came up with us we should have beaten these we didn't we uh, went behind to a Scott Arfield penalty after four minutes um, then two minutes later David McGoldrick equalised uh, in the sixth minute then in the 19th minute Ben Gordon put them back in front 2-1 uh, they then got another penalty which Scott Arfield missed this time just before half time and uh, straight after half time Nikolai Top or Stanley put us back level at 2-2 and then I thought we'd won it when Bebe uh, scored a header of all goals at the back post with four minutes to go um, but in, the, in stoppage time the referee awarded them their third penalty of the game and they scored it and they leveled it up at 3-3 I was really disappointed because we we created so much more we played so much better in, in the second half we dominated proceedings um, scoring those two goals to get back from 2-1 down to lead 3-2 um, and then the referee gave a penalty in the last minute which I complained about after the game and they said I was right to complain that there was, it, it shouldn't have been a penalty we had more possession away from home more chances more on target it was just an all round really good performance but we were let down by a referee and it, a few refereeing decisions look at that three penalties I'm sure they weren't all penalties um, we then played Bolton away and this was always going to be a tough game they've got a really really good side and we were absolutely battered um, Jason Punching got them off to a great start after 14 minutes uh, Bawab after 27 minutes made it 2-0 it was 3-0 at half time and Dujay Kopp scored four minutes before the break uh, five minutes straight after half time Ignacy Mikwell equal uh, got one back for us. Uh, that's now his. He scored now five goals this season in 20 games, three in the league. He's really proving to be a great f signing on a free transfer. Um, two minutes later, though, Dujay Cop made it four two, four one. Um, Dave McGoldrick gave us a little bit of hope. 15 minutes from time scoring, needing two more to get a point. But Duje Cop, 80 minutes from time, uh, sealed his hat trick and gave Bolton the 5 2 win. They had more possession, more shots, more shots on target, but not too many. Um, but I think if you look here, clear cut chances they created four, we only created one. Um, 
they prob they definitely deserve the win on the day. Whether it should have been five two, maybe a little bit harsh, but um, we need to just start performing, especially away from home in these games. We then played Leicester at home in the M69 derby and drew one all. Um, we took the lead after 52 minutes through William Ejinguele, um but Andy King equalised 14 minutes later. We did have a couple of chances towards the end, but. 1-1 I would have taken that because Leicester are a tough side to beat uh, it was a derby as well so um, we had more shots than them more but more on target but less of a percentage on target they the target 50% of the time uh, possession was very even probably a fair result on the day of draw as you can see McGoldrick picked up an injury he was ok to play in the next game though so nothing to worry about there but the next game was a 4-1 defeat at home to Leeds and this actually ended the stint in goal of Mauricio Nani. I uh, had enough after this game. He's going to be, he's been dropped. Actually, Joe Murphy will be replacing him. Uh, Leeds had the better the stats, uh, better the possession. Uh, probably deserved the win on the day, but again, four one may be a bit harsh. Luciano Becchi after 18 minutes putting them in front. Then a penalty just before the hour mark made it two nil. Four minutes later, McGoldrick got one back for us and put us back in the game, but Becchio sealed his hat-trick five minutes after that. And then Paul Green, in the 78th minute, made it 4-1 to seal victory. The main reason that I've dropped Nani is the amount of goals we're conceding, and this 68th minute goal was an absolute howler. The ball came towards Nani, he took it down with his on his feet, and then... He was running with it in the box, stopped the ball, ran past the ball. Becchio was coming towards it. He dived backwards, couldn't get to it. Becchio got to it and put it into an open goal. I'll quickly show it to you, just so you can see what I mean. It was just, it was absolutely shocking. I couldn't believe what what I was actually seeing. Um, and it did kill the game off in a way because we just got back to two one and uh, I really felt that we could go on and uh, maybe get an equaliser and get something out of the game but um, it wasn't to be let's hope football measure is not responding is it going to come back? yes, here we go so it's ball forward Nani takes it down then loses it goes back, couldn't get to it Becchio gets there and scores not good at all Um and then that's the end of uh, November so November consisted of six games three draws three defeats um, the draws here means Burnley at home Colchester away and uh, Leicester at home but we've conceded five thirteen we've conceded eighteen goals in six games that's an average of three a game it's really really poor and next up we've got Derby so we've got to try and uh, get back on track against these this is the third home game in the row we could do with a win out of the three we haven't got one so far um, Derby aren't doing the best we are now bottom of the championship we are only a point off uh, Colchester in 22nd and three points off Barnsley who are in the safe place uh, we've got a game in hand against Colchester as well. Look at Everton right the way down there. They have got a ton of games in hand because they're European exploits. Uh, but still, right down there is not a place you'd see, you'd expect to see Everton. Um, yeah, Derby are up in 15th, but they aren't in form at the moment. They haven't won themselves for a fair few games. So we'll be hoping to take advantage of that. Just going to show you their recent views. We won out the last seven, and that was away at Colchester. Um, so yeah, we hope to get a result against these today. Um, the teams for either side today for us it's Murphy in goal, Clark, Miquel, Ejengueli, and Topo Stanley at the back. Jordi Gomez and Jennings partner each other in centre midfield with the attacking trio of Bebe, Fleck, and Musa, and McGoldrick starts up front. Uh, for them, it's Legsdins and goal, Brayford, Keogh, an ex Coventry City player, left us when we got relegated, O'Brien and Lehigh at the back, 
Uh, Tete is the defensive midfielder with three man central midfield of Bryson, Mulgrew and Coots and Connor Salmon partners Jamie Ward in attack for Derby so get through these um, Jamie Ward hard tackling on him I don't like him I wouldn't mind injuring him so we're going to the start, as we control the game at home, we'll encourage them. When he just noticed how bad Steve Jennings' fitness is, didn't actually realise that he'd been back for a couple of games in the uh, uh, since his injury. But um, yeah, his fitness isn't good. But here we are, ready to kick off, and it's Fleck. And Edge and Gwaley and Musa to top or Stanley back to Musa. Can we create something here early on? It's Fleck, Musa. Fleck, top or Stanley, Jennings, some nice passing here. If we can get a cross in early on, we could cause him a bit of trouble. Here's Jennings, Fleck, Jordi Gomez working away towards the box. Bebe shot is blocked. O'Brien's chasing it. Clark gets there, cross it. Bebe brings it down. Bebe scores 44 seconds on the clock. And Bebe has scored for Coventry City. We lead Derby by a goal to nil. A great start by the lads. Just what the doctor ordered. Now can we kick on and make this make this game a three point win? As the cross comes in and Ward at the back post. Tipped over the bar by Murphy. Question is would Nanny have saved that? It's a corner. Coots into the box. Headed away by Bebe. Coots back in. It's fallen with Murphy and we still lead by a goal to nil but we've got to take advantage of the fact that we've scored first I can't remember the last time we took the lead in a game with the first goal of the match as Mulgrew plays it to Bryson all the way back to Legstins <coughs> Legstins out to Brayford at the back Tete back to Keogh and forward to Coots and Coots to O'Brien forward it goes Mickwell wins the header straight to Coots though and Coots running forward advances it's blocked it's Mulgrew Bryson Coots again and Bryson to Tete and now Bryson and Brayford and it's a dangerous attack and Brayford has put it into the back of the net and Derby have equalised just, just over 13 minutes gone it's one apiece here and we have thrown the lead away. We've let them just let them pass it around too much, not putting enough pressure on. And in fact, I'm going to put a shout out. I want pressure on the. Where is it? Hassle opponents. I don't want them to give them time. So. We're now halfway through the first half and it is one all. Good start from us in the first minute with Bebe scoring, but they've equalised through the fullback John Brayford. As we close in on half time and it is still all level, no highlights to speak of, and half time has come. It is Coventry City 1, Derby County 1. Um, and we've really need to improve up front because we're not creating much um, I listen to the assistant say no pressure um, I've got faith in McGoldrick I'm going to keep him on for the first few first 15 minutes if his uh, average rating doesn't improve we'll bring him off um, and Steve Jennings I think he's a bit tired so he's coming off and Stephen Hetherington can come on deep line playmaker support and that'll do as you can see McSheffrey's also been dropped he's had a few poor performances of late so Moose has been given the chance today Lingard was given the chance against Leeds as Derby kick off it's Salmon to Ward and Keogh now and it's a pointless highlight at the start of the second half as Richard Keogh gets booked for Derby. <clears throat> and here's the first highlight of the second half. Coops into the box and Salmon at the near post heads home. It's 2-1 to Derby. And things just go from bad to worse for us. 
we had a great start to this game. We've been poor ever since. We've created nothing of any note. There's Gomez as I speak, Bebe, and he's lost the ball. How the hell did that end up there? And there's no one there. Lehigh, the left back to Mulgrew, and here comes Arby on the counter attack. Salmon, Salmon shoots. Good save by Murphy. I think you could definitely no notice the difference between Murphy and Nanny in goal. Murphy's making a some really good saves. And before they did score the first, they, he did make a cracking save from there. Uh, I think it was kind of something like the chances. Top or Stanley, Hetherington, Moose and now down the left hand side, cross it deep. Bebe arrives and Bebe heads home. His second header goal in two, in uh, three games, three or four games. And Bebe, who's not known for his aerial ability, has scored his second of the match. And 20 minutes to go, we are 2-2. Here's Robinson for Derby. Back to Tete. And Brayford now. And it's Theo Robinson. And he's under pressure. He gives it away to Bebe as he tries to play a crossfield ball. It's cleared. Musa. Top or Stanley. Tackles, but it's Tete. Brayford down the right hand side. Crosses it in. It's Salmon at the back post. And he scores. His 10th goal of the season has given Derby the lead again. And we're going to have to start pushing for it now. Because if we don't, it's just going to be too late. Overload's fine. Attack. Um, and we're going to make a substitute as well. And the Goldrick's performance, I think, has been pretty poor. And indeed it has. So DJ Campbell will be coming on. Uh, while I'm on the subject, strikers, Emil Heskey, I am trying to get rid of him now. Um, he's not done anything. I've given him a chance every now and again, and he's just never performed to any sort of standard. Um, so I'm looking to get rid of him and use his wages elsewhere. So 17 minutes to go. Can we get a goal and equalise and take something from the match that we've performed pretty well in? Ten minutes left now, and it's getting closer. And here we go. It says it's Fleck, Top or Stanley. Don't give it away. He's giving it away to Tete. It does my head in when my defence do that. They dilly dally on the ball, give it away. Tete into Salmon. It's Robinson. It's a goal, and Derby have scored. And I'm. Oh, it frustrates me so much when the defence do that sort of thing when they just. They just pass it around. They just no urgency. They don't think of the sensible option, and they concede a goal. As Edge and Gwaley is going to get one back in stoppage time from a corner, but it is too little, too late. It's three, four now, and unless we can work a miracle in these last few seconds, Derby are going to take all three points from this game, and I wouldn't say they deserve it. I think we deserve at least a point out of it. On the plus side, we've scored three goals in this game, but on the on the bad side, we conceded four again. And we've got such a giant defence. Top or Stanley's over six foot. So is Edging Whaley. So is Mickwell. So why are we losing so many balls into the box? I just don't understand. I'll be definitely getting my team to work on uh, my defence to work on the uh, heading side of the game and clearance in training. And that wasn't a good team talk at all. Um, so there we go, lads. Three, well, four-three defeat. Um, we're going to remain bottom, despite looking really good in that game. I mean, the stats don't really show. It. I mean, we've hit the target five out of eleven times, which is pretty decent. Possession slightly in their favour. I thought we actually had more of it, um, but we scored three goals for the first. Well. It just doesn't matter how it seems to matter how many goals we scored, the opposition always seems to score one more. Um, but that defensive record has completely been shot since last season. Last season we conceded the least goals in League One. This season we conceded 53, which is 13, uh, 10 more than Colchester, and five more than Charlton, which is the second worst defensive record. So we've definitely got to improve on the defensive side. The goal scoring side isn't that bad. If you look, 31 goals is more than anyone else up to 
Millwall in 13th, so we're scoring goals, but we're conceding so many, so we've got to shore that defence up, try and do something in the January window. Um, that will be the next time you see me at the start of January. Um, I will do maybe a live come of the FA Cup game that we'll get. It's not been announced yet. Um, so next time you're with me, I'll recap these uh, December games. And yep, yeah, and the first game in January will be the FA Cup. So I will live com the FA Cup match. And maybe we might have had some business done by then in the uh, in the window. But if you look at that, we've got Reading away, Bristol City away, Wolves, and Blackburn and Charlton at home. And then away to Sheffield United. And if you look at the championship, the teams that we got to play, Wolves are first, Bristol City are third, Blackburn are seventh, Reading are ninth, Sheffield United are eleventh. So we've got five teams in the top half to play and two of them are in the top three. So if we're going to turn it around, we've got to perform miracles. So if you've liked this episode, please give it a like and subscribe if you haven't already. Um, and always leave a comment if you want to. I will uh, reply to every comment. Um, for now, thank you very much for joining me. See you later.